Fox Weather, your Hurricane HQ. We're almost two weeks into the Atlantic hurricane season and 10 days since we had the first named storm, Arlene. And it's official. NOAA's declaring El Nino is here. Fox Weather's hurricane specialist Brian Norcross is joining in in our discussion today on Weather Command. And Brian, El Nino was expected as... Uh... Amy has mentioned El Nino hath arrived. So the impacts in the Atlantic Basin, we know that that could maybe at least mitigate some of the development in the, in the Atlantic Basin. But let's talk about these sea surface temperatures in the Atlantic because they are freakishly warm, some of the warmest that we have seen in recent memory. Will those warm sea surface temperatures perhaps overcome this influence of the hostile winds that El Nino brings? Well, I think it's likely the answer is yes. And actually, freakish is a, a good word. It's not just that we have not seen these kind of temperatures lately. We've never seen this kind of warming in the eastern Atlantic. Now, <clears throat> there are a, a couple of things to talk about here. One is that whenever a large area of the ocean gets exceptionally warm, that changes the weather pattern. And since we haven't seen this kind of warming before, exactly wow. how this is going to change the overall weather pattern is a kind of unknown. Uh, we've never seen a warm Pacific, that's the El Nino, plus we've never ever seen this warm the, in the eastern Atlantic. So how that's going to interact uh, is, is a an unknown uh, question, so I'm not sure about that. But one of the things we do know is that we have not seen a lot of Saharan dust this year. And one of the effects of Saharan dust is that it tends to cool the Atlantic, the tropical Atlantic. So, uh, you know, it's a little early to jump on, oh my goodness, the Eastern Atlantic is super warm. Uh, you know, how is that going to affect us later in hurricane season since the dust season should be just getting started and normally lasts through July and into August. So if the dust really does pick up off the uh, African continent and start cooling the Atlantic, we might get something back to something closer to just warm as opposed to, you know, on the boiling side there in the eastern Atlantic. I can't resist the uh, discussion over the GFS, the Global Forecast <laughs> System model. Um, it's shown the tropical activity kicking off into the Caribbean later this month. You know, it goes all abuzz. Social media goes all abuzz with this. But these models aren't necessarily capable of forecasting hurricanes that far out into the future. What do you say about that discussion, about that um, anticipation of something like that happening? You know, is there anything that we can expect for development as far as any clues that are out there right now? Well, the GFS it was doing it the last year, too, that in the distant uh, future, like after 10 days, mm -hmm. it tends to latch on, you know, somebody going like this in the air, and it turns out into a hurricane. So, <laughs> you know, I don't look at that at all. Um, you know, if it's past, you know, I think what everybody should do is stick with 240 hours. If yeah. uh, that's 240 hours is uh, 10 days, and just don't look at it after 10 days, right? <laughs> or at least don't look at the details. That's right. Uh, stick with, you know, this. that's what the European goes out to 10 days. Just stick with 10 days on the GFS and, and ignore the rest, except for maybe the broad weather pattern, but the details of what happens at the surface in terms of spinning up storms, um, I think it's proven itself to be unreliable in that regard. Well, Brian, what else is it that you that you look for? Because in the months of June and July, things can be relatively quiet. You had mentioned the Saharan air layer, that Saharan dust is a component, and sea surface temperatures. The Gulf of Mexico that I, I, I've noticed, especially up a little closer to the Big Bend so of Florida, it, it, it's warm in the central Gulf, but it's a little cooler close to the coast. Yeah, you know, the, sun, the Gulf of Mexico responds pretty quickly to cold fronts and so forth. So we're going to have this big heat wave that, yeah. is, you know, as you were talking about earlier over, over Texas and generally calm winds, and that tends to heat up the Gulf of Mexico. But the, the Gulf of Mexico, if, if you get a storm or you get uh, strong winds or something like that, it'll start turning over and cool off. So uh, the Gulf of Mexico is a more short-term kind of uh, up and down thing with the temperature of the water. But... I, you know, if you had to guess what's going to happen right now, the El Nino in the Pacific tends to make upper level winds that really shut off the uh, Caribbean and into the Atlantic some. The eastern Atlantic less mm -hmm. so. So it may very well be that we see storms in the eastern Atlantic, but once they try and get west, then they start being affected by the El Nino. But that's just kind of a wild guess here as we are just at the beginning of the whole process. 
I'm Amy Freeze. Welcome to Fox Weather's YouTube page. We have more great videos on the way, so make sure to subscribe to stay updated on all things weather.